Hello, 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 and welcome to this edition of A Quick Pint. Now, today I would like to talk about Britain's A-level results uh, and why they are completely ludicrous and the whole thing has to be totally, totally overturned and, and utterly reformed. Now, for Americans, uh, A-levels are the British School Leaving Certificate. When you are 16, you do your GCSEs, you do maybe 10 or 11 subjects, you do English, maths, um, science, whatever, uh, a, a foreign language, or it used to be a foreign language, and then various other subjects. And then those that you do best in, you tend to do for your A-levels, and uh, how you do in your A-levels affects what kind of jobs you can then go and get, um, or what kind of university you can go to. And the best universities require the best A-level results. Until 2010, the A-level range was A to E, and then in 2010, they introduced A-star, um, which was um, for, for particular excellence. Now, what we have seen, the A-levels are now completely meaningless, and what we have seen uh, is is grade inflation to a quite incredible extent and I want to look at how this has happened and why and uh, you know, sort of what we can do about it. So basically you take your three best subjects you did at GCSE and those are what you do for your A-levels. In my case I did English Literature, History and Christian Theology and um, the, the way in which this has changed across time really does give quite a fascinating insight into how uh, the nature of society ha has, has changed and how attitudes have changed. So in 1999, when I did my A-levels, 15% uh, of pupils achieved an A grade. When they brought in the A-star grade, and they did this because of grade inflation, so they were saying as far back as 2010, it's ridiculous, there is grade inflation, how can we distinguish between the best candidates, there's so many A's, there's far too many people getting A by 2010, by which time it had gone up to at least 20% or more getting A. Um, we have to distinguish between them. How do we do it? We brought in something like A star. And what they did was they halved it. So they basically, it, it, what happened in, in 2010 was that 8% of pupils got um, got, a, got an A star and uh, an, another sort of 8% or so uh, got an A. So they cut it in half. The top half of, of A became A star. But let us look at how this has changed. What they are complaining about this year is that we have gone back in England to pre COVID grades. So what they did in um, under COVID was that rather than you taking exams, rather than you having to do exams in person, rather than you know actually a proper assessment of how well you were doing, um, te teachers would, would predict your grades and would give you grades based on you know, how well you'd done in class and, and on coursework, which of course um, militates in favour of females because females are higher in conscientiousness than males. They're more hard working. Um, they're better at structure and order and things like that. So coursework favours them, whereas the idea of having a, 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 a one big exam at the end, which is what happened in my A-level history, it was just two exams. That was it. Two exams at the end of the course. And how well you do, that's it. The, the, the pressure, the pressure's on, re revising at the last moment. That, of course, militate, that, that favours boys. Um, but... Uh, anyway, that was that was that was what they did, and they decided to give everyone the benefit of the doubt, uh, and and so you got these ludicrous inflated A level grades, such that in 2021, 20 percent of pupils were marked A star, and A star, remember, is not just excellent. A was always excellent. A star is super excellent, brilliant, superb, exemplary. So we're saying that 20 percent of the population are brilliant. But somehow, um, in 2010, that was only 8% of the population. So the percentage of the population that is, that is super brilliant more than doubled between 2010 and 2021 strikes me as rather unlikely. Um, again, then 40% of pupils received either an A or an A star. 40% um, compared to uh, uh, something like 22% uh, before that. I mean, 40%, an A or above. Uh, so that you have this massive growth. That was the real growth in A's. So all of these people that would have got B's or C's uh, before COVID and deserved B's or C's are suddenly being given A's. And A is the, the standard you need to get into the, the best universities. 40%, almost half, almost half of British pupils, because A-levels are borderline or some kind of qualification, most students now do A-levels. So basically half of British students are apparently are excellent, are just the top, top stuff, superb, you know, university first year standard. Good God. 
and 70% um, received, as I, as I, as I understand it, uh, at least a B grade, 70% 70, 70 in 2021. Now, these, of course, have declined back down, so it's now more like, uh, it's more like 60% that received a B grade or above. But this is just telling you the insanity of this. And if you compare it to what was going on in 1999, 15% grade A, and by implication, about 7% grade A star, you can see the lunacy of this. Now, why has it happened? What is causing this grade inflation? There's a number of factors. At first, I think it's just harm avoidance. We are, we are a society that has tipped over into the individually oriented values. I've looked at this on so many videos. What we now value it is harm avoidance above all else. We are obsessed with children, with safeguarding. We are obsessed with, with looking after children, with molly coddling children. You know, the, the parents are told not, not to allow their kids to bring in birthday party invitations to school, to somehow do it, uh, arrange it surreptitiously, such that other children don't feel left out. We, I, I understand that playtime is now heavily monitored at schools to avoid bullying and to avoid children being uh, being left out. We, um, we, we can't have uh, uh, we have for a long time we haven't been able to have swings and 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 and, and uh, parks within pub gardens because of injuries and people suing we are obsessed with this harm avoidance and you can see how this leaks over into the mind and makes and makes people want to not be objective but but, but want to be kind want to avoid harm want to spare the feelings even of an anonymous uh, 18 year old whose a level script uh, you are writing such that there is an un that our subconscious pressure to increase the grade, to give him an A or her an A star where it would have been an A, to give an A where it would have been a B, and so forth. Likewise, with the teachers that are predicting these grades, and it's um, a, a, a new predicted grades are a significant thing in the UK. Um, uh, yeah, well, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, let's be kind. Let's be, let's not upset the person. And there's all this pressure on schools as well. Schools are assessed on how well the kids do in their A levels, um, and so and uh, and. and, and marked accordingly by inspectors and all of this sort of thing. And so there's all of this pressure to increase the grades, to increase the grades, because all everybody wants um, is the straight A stars or the straight A's for their pupils. That's what is desired. And so the social pressure on teachers, on exam markers, on everybody involved to bring that about is, is higher and higher and higher. And the pressure against being objective, the pressure against being harsh, the pressure against treating this as an important qualification that matters and by which we need in a meritocratic society so that we can successfully divide people up according to their abilities. The very idea that you should even do that, the very idea that people have differential abilities and that you can say this person is on this measure superior to this person. This person is more intelligent. This person is more conscientious. These are the predictors of doing well at school. Intelligence about 0.7 um, and conscientiousness about 0.55. Um, th th this is out. This is forbidden. This is taboo. And so you can see why the grades go up. And in a context of COVID, of course, oh, these poor children, they're under so much stress, the poor darlings. We, and so there's all this disappointment now that people have not got the grades they were predicted. Teachers were predicting what grades pupils would get based on their past experience under COVID. And they have, and obviously the examiners have now been instructed to be stricter and to go back down. That's the first reason. The second reason is just teaching to the test. Um, when I was at school, we had some teachers. I, I had a teacher in RE, for example. She very much taught to the test. She was young. She was 23 or something like this. She was new into teaching. She was very clear on what the what the script, what the exams were that came up each year. We had past papers, uh, and she taught us according to those past papers. That was her system. She absolutely taught to the test. So, so pupils are being spoon fed um, exactly what they have to do in order to pass the test. Not in order to create thoughtful, intellectual pupils that are really thinking about the different areas and so forth. And of course, this comes across then in university interview. This gets interesting. The universities are confronted with all of these kids that have all got A's or A stars. And then when they interview them, they, they can sift between those that have just uh, are able to get an A or an A star because they are, they are good at their high in conscientiousness, basically, and they are good at just learning the information and vomiting it back up onto the page in an intelligent sounding way, uh, and those that are genuinely intelligent. And so, and so university interview and even uh, the, the universities setting their own exams and the universities just increasingly regarding A-levels as meaningless. 
um, is, 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 but of course the universe themselves going woke, but that's a, that's a, you know, that's a separate issue. Um, but so so you can see how how that is happening. I had another teacher, RE teacher, and um, what what did we do in his classes? We just had a chat. We just had a chat about whatever was on his mind that was vaguely related to, let's say, St. Paul. So he'd be teaching us about St. Paul, and uh, was it 2 Corinthians or 1 Corinthians, I forget which we learnt with him, and just a chat. And we all did better in the modules that he taught than in the modules that the, 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 the female teacher taught. Maybe that's because we were boys. Maybe that's because we were boys, and we, and we learned differently from girls. I, I, I don't know, but that, 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 I thought that was quite an interesting phenomenon. Um, and the, the next reason, obviously, is it's just easier to access information. I mean, it's, it's, it's just basically the Flynn effect. The Flynn effect is this idea that, that uh, across the 20th century, um, we, we, we are living in an increasingly scientific society. It forces us to think in a more scientific way. It also means that we, and, and therefore it increases um, aspects of, of, of intelligence that are at the base of the sort of intelligence pyramid. You have this pyramid of intelligence, the bottom specialized abilities that weakly relate to intelligence, the ability to know, drive a car or spot patterns or something like this, write an essay well. Um, and then above that you have linguistic, you have verbal and you have spatial, and above that you have general intelligence G. And this is pushed to its phenotypic maximum, basically, this, this process, um, are these, these specialised abilities that kind of mimic intelligence. Now, obviously, this has been going on. Uh, and you, you add to that the fact that, particularly with linguistic type subjects, we are saturated with information, we are saturated with language, and it's so much easier than it would have been 20 years ago with the internet and so forth. And then add to that, and I think this is highly relevant, it's just coursework. Uh, there, there is a strong coursework component to your A-level result, i.e. not an exam, but coursework. This you do at home on your own. With the internet, of course, it's extremely easy to cheat, um, and it's extremely easy to find the information and write something that is really good. I mean, it, even as, a, as a, myself, as a person that writes papers for academic journals, how much easier is it now to write a, an academic paper with all this information so easily obtainable? Uh, and you know, a real nuanced paper because you can get hold of everything. You can get hold of all the information you could possibly need, all of the counter arguments, everything, than it was when I first wrote an academic paper in about 2002. Um, and I was—I had no internet access. I was bed, bed anything on the internet. I was just reliant on books and academic papers that were in the library. Um, and and, and so how much easier? So of course it's easier. It's much easier. So what you have to do is adjust the grades accordingly. Understand that it's getting easier. This is what they do in Finland. It's, it's as I—I I forget the exact percentages, but it's something like that. The, the top five percent um, gets laudatum. Which in their equivalent of A-levels, which is the top possible grade. I think it's five, it's five or ten percent. And the bottom five or ten percent fail every year. That's, that's the system. And then there's various gradations in between. Eximia cum laude, cum laude, blah, 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 blah. That's the system. Uh, and this, is, of course, is a system upon which the universities and upon which employers can rely. They know. If you've got loud datum, then you are extremely intelligent. You are the top 5% of the population, and it's always the top 5%. Now, to be fair, we know from the, the negative thin effects and from the Woodley effects that I've discussed that intelligence is going down. So the top 5% every generation is going to be less intelligent than the previous top 5%. Maybe we should change it. Maybe we should make it the top 4%, top 3%. But at least it gives you something. At least it gives you something to go on if you're an employer or if you're a university. So that is what Britain should do. It should adopt the Finnish system. Right.